Thanks, Jen. Uh, you said yesterday the president feels a lot, a great deal of the crime we're seeing is a result of gun violence, but the stats show it's not just gun crimes. So why does the president think there's been a 30% increase in car thefts in D.C., 47% increase in robbery in New York City, or a 98% increase in rapes in Atlanta? Well, first, I think if you look at a number of cities across the country, it is actually driven by gun violence. Um, take St. Louis um, in 2021, 96% of homicides uh, where the instrument is known were committed using a firearm. In New York City, uh, from March 2020 to March 2021, shooting incidents have jumped 77%. The city recorded more than 1,500 shootings in 2020, 97% more than 777 in 2019. There are major cities across the country where gun violence is absolutely the driver, where it is absolutely increasing. And that will be a central part of what he'll talk about when he delivers his remarks tomorrow. And given everything that is going on with guns, without guns, does the president still think that this is the best time to end cash bail? Uh, I don't think I have a, any new position on that for you, but I'm happy to check and see if there's anything more to report. So, so his stated position from his website, which is that basically end cash bail, he wants to lead a national effort to and cash bail and reform the pretrial system that stands? I don't have a new position for you, but I'm happy to check for you. And so for people who are watching who might be worried about a rise in crime, what does the president think is a deterrent to committing a crime if there is no cash bail in place? Well, well let me give you a, just a sense to the degree I can, because we're still finalizing the specifics. Um, there's been, one, an increase in violent crime over the last 18 months. It's not just over the last few months. And actually, if you look statistically back, it's more over the last five years or so. So there's an initial set of actions the president has announced uh, to date uh, uh, to address gun violence back in April, strengthening regulations on ghost guns, stabilizing braces that make firearms more lethal, investing money in community violence intervention programs, uh, an investment that he thinks can be quite effective. He's talked about for decades, and I think you'll hear him talk about more tomorrow, uh, supporting additional funding for community policing through his budget request and helping state and local governments keep co cops on the beat. So yes, we believe that a central driver of violence is gun violence and is the use of guns. We're seeing that statistically in a lot of areas, but he also believes that we need to ensure that state and local governments keep cops on the beat, that we're supporting community policing, and that's a key part of it as well. And just the last one, uh, you just said again, you guys want to keep cops on the beat, but there are reports that big cities are having a very difficult time recruiting officers right now, and there are many other reports that morale is at an all-time low in big police departments. So why does the president think that there's low morale with police officers on the beat? I, I don't think we're the right entity to give an assessment of that. I'd certainly look to the police departments to give that assessment. But what I would say to you is that the president has never supported defunding the police. He's always supported uh, community policing programs. He supported giving funding to, to, to states and localities around the country, including through his American uh, Rescue Plan, because he thinks there is an essential role to play for community policing. Go ahead, Andrea. I want to ask you about infrastructure.